news now at six. Many across the area looking at their yards wondering where do I start with all of the cleanup? We're continuing to see the widespread damage from yesterday's powerful storm. Here's what it looked like during the thick of it. Thanks to the viewers that send in these videos and the photos. We just say that so much, but it really does help us give you images like what you're seeing on your television right now. Cleveland and Gaston County certainly got the brunt of the system in our area. There's no questions about that. Yeah, we are seeing most of the power outages from a percentage standpoint, definitely in uh, Gaston and Cleveland. Today, National Weather Service experts confirmed why they say two EF1 tornadoes were on the ground yesterday, one that went from Cleveland County to Gaston County, and then another that also just hit Gaston County. And while the facts and the statistics about the storm are becoming clearer, a lot of folks are really just looking at the mess that they're dealing with in Gaston County. In fact, we just learned that schools will be closed again tomorrow because of the lingering outages and then the road blockages they're still seeing. Yeah, and that's as others deal with some power outages still into this evening. Road closures, insurance claims, of course, and the emotional toll to all of this. Our team is working hard to cover the aftermath of this storm from every angle for you, trying to give you the entire picture. You see some of our crew there. We we want to first start with our chief meteorologist Brad Panovich. So Brad, you were learning about these two tornadoes. Uh, what can you tell us about how long one or both of them were on the ground? You know, it's cl it's clear there was two tornadoes, but there was also widespread straight line wind damage that was likely 70 to 80 miles per hour. We had one EF1 tornado that basically touched down in northern Cleveland County, moved through Cherryville in northwestern Gaston County. That was on the ground for 22 miles. The second tornado from the same storm touched down again near Gastonia and then moved over here towards Belmont and Mount Holly. That was an EF1 that was on the ground for just over eight miles, but that was a little narrow, only 60 yards wide. So those tornadoes alone did not cause all the damage. It was straight line winds as well. And yesterday, if you were watching our live coverage on air, we showed you these incredible pictures from our Dallas sky cam, which is up on our tower at 1500 feet. And that animation is that sped up, though. That's the shelf cloud. And when you see that ominous cloud, it looks like a spacecraft. That's actually the sign of straight line winds. And that's what moved across the entire county and caused widespread damage. So that's what it looked like from our tower cam on the ground behind me. You can see what that damage is. It damaged these power poles and not just the lines. It snapped those large power poles, and that's why it's taking so long for the power to be repaired. These crews could not put their bucket trucks up tomorrow when that set or this morning, I should say, when that second wave came in. So they had to delay their start until later this morning, and now they had to repair the poles. So I was walking over here talking to some of the neighbors here. They slept in their camper last night because they didn't have any air conditioning in their house. They asked me when the power is going to be back on. We talked to Duke at five o'clock. They said it likely will be sometime tonight, but for some folks, it could be tomorrow because of all the repairs that have to be done here in Gaston County. Wow, that is a tough situation. All right, Brad, thanks for giving us that look there and some insight into the 